Starting to find her run, uh, her weight. <laughs> Needs to make something happen. Coming up, oh, well touching done. something, and we'll get them both. Are you going to spill them both? Well yes, that's the shot of a champion, a six time Canadian champion. Well, she did tell us that by the ninth end, she felt that she would be ready to go. <laughs> so. Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. 1963, when they took the briar to Brandon. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Whitman with Don Duga, two-time world champion. Rebelly will take the game. Wow, first to the runner, right off the nose, and never wavered. A little bit of curling history for you. High drama, high intensity. Way, 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 way. Hi, again, curling fans. We are back. Colleen, I've missed you. Curling fans, I've missed you. Colleen, was, <laughs> was that an outturn raise double takeout? My goodness, I don't know if you can hear that the game is just wrapped up here and now there's a party going on and I can even hear the patch across the way. It's going to be hard to hear you, I want to say. A lot of drama here uh, in this sort of sudden death format new concept love it so i got to play now i'm also out <laughs> now <laughs> single game knockout as you said colleen high drama we are so excited to be back our third season if you can believe it uh colleen before we came on the air i tweeted uh that we started this in our kitchens uh in the middle of a pandemic and we are back and we're still here and we're excited for this third season and you said it you were on the ice colleen what was it like 40 years we saw the footage after your first scotty's win in regina to be back under the bright lights Devin, i'm not sure i can tell you that i don't know what you just said because it's <laughs> i don't know if you can hear how loud it is i'm sure you were brilliant um Hey, I'm seeing Jennifer Jones down there talking with her husband, Mr. Lang. They just, uh, they just, did they win? Did they win? Who won that they game? They did win. <laughs> they did Gosh. win. They you know, did Jennifer, win, she's Colleen. She's getting out to practice. Jennifer's on the show. Does she know she's on the show? Oh, she knows. She's, she's going to be joining us a little bit later. We have a right. jam-packed show. Uh, okay. Colleen, people are very proud of you. Uh, curling fans, let us know where you're tuning in from. As always, roll call. And uh, Luckily, we, uh, Valerie, we missed all of you too. Um, I can hear show. you now. The music stopped. You can hear me. So I'm sure you were brilliant on the opening. Just saw Johnny Moe, by the way. He's looking terrific. And he's here because tomorrow night they're having this celebrity um, curling event that features a 100-meter sprinter king, Donovan Bailey playing in it. Donovan to curling tomorrow. He's curling here in Fredericton tomorrow night. Now, of course, we in the Maritimes are preparing for Hurricane Fiona. Right. Shouldn't affect Fredericton at all. Okay. But um, it's a big deal as they try to um, create an, a bigger atmosphere, especially around this event. It's hard to get people interested in curling in September. You're closing down the cottage. You're getting the kids back to school. You're all busy. We get it. 
well, this sudden death format, can, you know, starts instant. Who doesn't love drama more than Devin? <laughs> and it also, it also with this sort of celebrity event coming up tomorrow, right? Um, creates a little bit of a buzz as well. Well, there is a buzz uh, <laughs> specifically around all of the new teams, and uh, I know all. Of the, I mean, look at this. And 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 listen, call. We could have had. And thanks, producer, so for putting this together. We could have had more teams up here because there were so many changes at the end of last season and throughout the off season. But there are some of them right now. Uh, I know that Rachel Holman is on the line. We have her here. Uh, Colleen, you went head to head with her earlier today. So why don't we bring in Rachel and get this party started? Um, because they look so darn good way. today. There she is, Rachel. It's an impressive looking team, Rachel. Congratulations on it. And how are you feeling? You're all coming together. Yeah, thanks, Colleen. It's great to get uh, on the ice um, under the lights. And uh, it was uh, obviously some nerves, right? Single elimination game. And um, I think uh, everyone's tuning in and cheering hard. So it's, it's lots of fun. Rachel, wonderful to see you, and thank you for doing this. Uh, how was the off season? Did it feel did it feel longer than usual? You were going into a season for the first time in a while with changes. So, what was that like? Um, yeah, I think first time in a while, I haven't had a, a newborn or been pregnant in the off season, so it went awesome. It was <laughs> it was much more productive this summer, and um, yeah, it went really well. Training was great. It was great to reconnect with the family after. Uh, two years of, of COVID craziness, and it was um, just an awesome summer, and we uh, even more exciting in the fall. Um, we're just so excited to get together and be able to play. It's it's really exciting. Our new team, we're uh, really proud of uh, all the work that everyone's put in and where we're at right now, and um, hopefully we can keep it going uh, this weekend. How did you prepare? I know everybody's making a lot about your sweeping, but the other thing I want to make the other thing I want to make a point of, you guys seem to be having a lot of fun. Your social media <laughs> has been has been an adventure, and I think we're going to bring some of that up, Rachel. Oh man, um, I've never even seen these. I can't watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. They're making me watch it. Who's in the room with you, Rachel? <laughs> Uh, Emma's here. Emma has played a star role in these, by the way. Yeah, she's been a TikTok star for sure. So, it's a, a bit of a serious question as we have some fun with this, but I've always said that I, uh, I've thought that oh, yeah. curling fan, or, or curlers are the most accessible to the fans. You guys have brought us into your team during the off season. So there seems to be some intentionality behind having fun and showing us a little bit behind the scenes, Rachel. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, we always have so much fun um, kind of when the, the game's over. And I mean, the, the game is also fun, but um, there's a lot on the line and you're representing a lot and um, everyone that supported you and you're trying to achieve big, big goals and big dreams um, so yeah, there's a lot of business on the ice, but we love it and enjoy it at the same mm -hmm. time. Um, and we have so much fun on the road and in the off season, we, we laugh a ton. So, um, we've been kind of showing a little bit behind the scenes here and there when we get together and just, it's just a lot of fun and jokes and laughs and, um, it really makes it so enjoyable and we, we love curling together and, um, yeah, it's, it's been really fun. Okay, I don't know if it's catching on yet, and I don't know that you can see my whiteboard properly because I'm not liking my lighting right now, but I'm calling it Team Flowman. <laughs> you told me that um, before the game. How's the sweeping? How's it not being in the house all the time, mm. especially throwing last rocks? What's that adjustment like? Yeah, it's. I was kind of talking to the team today. It's. I feel like I'm all over the place, but it doesn't feel foreign. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like we just feel like we just have a bunch of powerhouse names on our team and we're just trying to make the next shot like it there's doesn't really feel like a lineup it just feels like we're just trying to make everyone's shot as a team sweepers line calling throwing and um it's just a lot of fun and it's nice to do something different it's been mm. i don't know 50 years of skipping i'm just kidding i'm not that old 
Um, but it has been for Colleen. <laughs> you didn't oh, miss. No. Like, you didn't miss. Like, you were on fire. So. Yeah, you fired us up before the game. You were you pumped us up. You Wait a second. A new team name. Colleen fire, gave you a pep talk before the game? Yeah, she gave us a little selfie shout out and let's go team home. And it was, it was a great little chat you had. Could, yeah. I couldn't miss after that, Colleen. I'm having trouble hearing. The music is blaring right now. Teams are, why aren't you here practicing, Rachel? There's teams out there practicing. I don't How do you like this it. format? Did you already answer that? The format, uh, Rachel. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's um, definitely challenging coming out here in a tropical storm on a single elimination game. That that's a little bit uh, nerve wracking. <laughs> Just lights the fire even more, and not to miss because we're not getting out of here anyways. Um, no, the format's great. It's great for curling. I think all the fans are kind of on the edge of their seat. Like, you better make this draw. You better make this hit. Everything's on the line. Um, yeah, it makes the games interesting. And as opposed to like a round robin where, um, oh, okay, you got to win your next few. Uh, it, yeah, it's um, lots of intensity, lots of fun games to watch. Everyone's tuning in. It's great. Um, Rachel, one thing I love about this show is how vulnerable you guys are when you come on the show and you, you've shared a lot. You've shared a lot throughout this show. How are you? And what was the off season like for you? Was it, take us, peel back the curtain for us and tell us <laughs> what that was like going into this season. Yeah, I feel like I did. It was um, it was really an amazing summer. Um, I, I feel like Canada wide, like the world was just like, here's an amazing summer of weather. Mm. Sorry, sorry for COVID. It was just like every weekend was 30 degrees, beautiful, um, fun to do things with the family and easy to get workouts in. Um, weather was great for travel. So got together mm. with the team a few times and really made a plan of, of coming back and kind of reinvigorating ourselves um, and getting excited about curling. It's been a, a long time doing the same thing with the same players and we still love the game and love each other, love playing together. Um, and so this is just a fun new way of uh, keeping the fire going and keeping that excitement for the game. Um, yeah, it's it's been awesome. So Do you map? Do, do you map out goals? Do you do you openly speak about goals going into a season? <clears throat> like together or team? Yeah, as as a team. Do, <laughs> do, do, do you speak about that openly? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you want to make sure that when you're putting the team together, everyone's on the same page and that everyone's got that same fire and excitement mm -hmm. because awesome. if there's there's even just one of you that's not really into it or isn't, you know, putting and that, that's totally fine, but you got to make sure you've got four people kind of paddling in the same direction. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And um, it might look different for every team and every individual, and that's totally fine. Uh, but for us, we, we found um, four athletes that are uh, excited and fired up to go. And uh, yeah, it's really fun to start and chat with you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. How are the kids? How's the family, Rachel? Good, but uh, daycare hit us like a truck. So um, they've been sick for like a month straight, I think. Um, yeah, got a little bit of a sinus issue myself, but uh, um, should clear up soon. And yeah, it's been it's been great. They're awesome, growing, lots of fun. They're at such fun ages, and uh, every day is kind of a new adventure. And uh, they make us laugh all the time, so it's great. Nice. Awesome, awesome. And you cloned yourself. I mean, you got a mini me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've, I didn't realize, but yeah. So cute, <laughs> so cute. Awesome, Rachel. All right, Team Flowman. I think it's, I think it's gonna, Flowman. I think it's gonna catch on. I made I, us laugh. We appreciated I mean, it. Everybody <laughs> needs a nickname. Absolutely. Rachel, wonderful to see you. Keep it rolling out there, hey. Yeah, thank you so much for okay. having me. It's great to see you guys. You yeah, too. yeah. Take uh, care. Keep, keep the play up. My God, they were on fire, <clears throat> on fire. Um, I'm, I'm. So, so. Brett Gallant is is here, and we're going to bring him in in a second. But I wonder if we can quickly, Colleen, run through all of the new teams. Oh, um, my whiteboards! Well, oh, with our oh, with our proper <laughs> graphic. Um, where are we at? Okay, team. Botcher. I mean, let's let, hold on. Let's start with Team Botcher and yeah. Brett Gallant. Y yeah. You know, I want to know what it was like for him to look around, and you spend so much time on one team, and then you've got to readjust. So. 
of course, Team Botcher. There's Hebert and Kennedy back together again. Gallant in the mix with Skipper uh, Brennan Botcher. So if we can keep running through them. Uh, Team Jones, we're going to talk to Jennifer after her practice, Colleen. But how about this young team and, and the veteran, of course, six-time Scotty's champion, Jennifer, leading the way there. Um, team Dunstone, Maddie headed back to the Bison province, of course, of Manitoba with BJ Colton and, uh, and Ryan out of Northern Ontario, the Saskatchewan team. There's Chelsea, Jolene, Liz, and Rachel. I hope everybody at home is writing this down. Guju has a team. They got a win tonight uh, to start the event. There's EJ. And I think, Colleen, take a look at this. Uh, a little bit of a mistake with the name tag for, for EJ. Um, I and know. Let's, isn't, that a, isn't that hysterical? Well, it's hilarious, right? Because I think we're all going to do this throughout the entire season where we got to get the program out for every game because who's with who, right? Right. Um, there's Cooey, Karik, and Brad, of course, from Botcher, teaming up with Tyler Tardy, who was so great on the junior scene, wasn't he, Colleen? Uh, of course, with party. Tardy Party and Kevin Cooey, of course, big win for them tonight. Caitlin skipping, and that'll be really interesting to watch throughout this year. There's Kristen, Jocelyn, Selena, of course, part of that team. Flurry coming over there, and the always effervescent. Greg Smith with a new team out of Newfoundland and Labrador, who, of course, Colleen, will have two representatives from The Rock because Brad, with that memorable three-person win uh, last That's season. That's the talent he's got on that team now, so it's going to be interesting to see what they lost in the first game. He emceed the big drag event here last oh, night. Oh, I missed that. And um, he, uh, he totally blamed himself for the loss. Right. He would. He would. Yeah. There's Scheidegger. I love this team. I think they're going to have a lot of fun. I think they're going to win a lot of games. Um, so watch out for Team Agreed. Scheidegger. Let's bring in Brett, because I've been dying to ask him what it's been like to be on a new team. Brett, hi. Welcome. Great great to see you. Uh, since we last talked, Brett, congratulations. You're a married man. Congratulations to you and Jocelyn. Uh, nice. How, how was the honeymoon wedding? looked amazing. Can we talk about the honeymoon? <laughs> oh, yeah. We've had the um, – yeah. The guys are calling it the summer of Brett, they keep saying, because we had such an exciting summer. And, uh, yeah, our wedding was fabulous. We got married in, in PEI. Um, we had a great uh, a great couple of weeks there, um, at, you know, my hometown. And um, then we moved out west. We, we got settled in Alberta and wow. spent a few weeks there. And then we, uh, honestly, we went back to Newfoundland. A few Did of our have friends. another wedding in Alberta? Uh, no, no. Okay. Uh, and then we went to Newfoundland. We had some of our friends getting married. So we celebrated out there. And then we went on a, on a honeymoon ourselves to Italy. So we had a, a, a busy but amazing summer. Brett, you're always on it. Instagram. We feel like we were there on the honeymoon with you. We weren't on the honeymoon with you, but, you know. We, we thought we would have been invited. Anyway, Brett, we'll what? talk about that. I mean, maybe the invitation got lost in the mail. Possibly. <laughs> Brett, um, you're preparing for a season of, of a different team for the first time in a while. Be honest. You always are. But what what has this been like? Oh, it's it's been um, it's been both exciting and I think a little bit. Um, there's been maybe nerves at, at certain points. I'm just wondering um, how the new team is going to fit together. Um, but lots of changes, uh, both uh, you know logistically, just being at West, and even as we start our season, I'm playing a bunch of events that I've never played before in the in the, the local Alberta events. And but um, my new guys have, have made it super easy. We've put a lot of kind of effort into getting to know one another before the season starts. We've been on the ice together quite a bit in, over the last month, trying to uh, learn each other's deliveries and, and how we can, um, like we're coming from four separate teams. So we have um, four ways of executing our shots and four ways of communicating. And we're trying to narrow that down to one cohesive uh, way of communicating and making shots. So. Um, we've got the wheels in motion and we're pretty excited with how it's coming together, but we do realize that it, it's going to take time to um, reach our capabilities that we think we have as a team, but it's awful exciting kind of trying to to get get there and to start moving the pieces and climbing the ladder. Go ahead, Carl. Tell us about this super team. I mean, and, and you talk about that excitement, but are, 
four of you like aware of just the power of this team? Yeah, we're excited. We have we have four guys that have all the same goals, all of the same drive to uh, to get to where we want to go. Um, experience, a lot of experience. Um, Brendan's the youngest guy in our team, and he's played in I think four Briar Finals already, and and, and won one of them. So. Mm. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a good amount of experience and a good amount of drive, I think, left in us to to hopefully, um, you know, start wearing some maple leaves together and and bringing home some gold medals. I, I see, I see Patrick Penguin, and I know that to Ed. He's mentioning where Brett is staying in Fredericton. I was thinking the entire. You've got the nicest place. Where where are you, Brett? Oh, we were at a Benny Heebs Airbnb special. Uh, he kind of went all out for the for the new squad. He wanted a place where we could bond. Boss just had the the fireplace stoked all day. We're, if you're if we're sweating a little bit, it's just because we've been enjoying the the fireplace as we watch the games on TV. And um, honestly, we're just we're just trying to spend a lot of time together as a team and and uh, get comfortable with one another. We got a, a big card crib game coming up after this, so it's uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. Well, say hi to all of them. Um... And, and I want to know about this cohesion because because Ben Brett has talked a lot about the the chemistry and looking at some of the teams, you know, Adine's team, uh, Bruce's team over there, they spend a lot of time together. And it sounds from what you're sharing with us tonight that you guys are really focusing on team and chemistry. So maybe some thoughts on that. I think so. I, th I think we've noticed that the most of the most successful teams, they have four great shooters, but they're able to get a little bit more out of their shooters um, by helping each other out. And whether it's communication or um, just support, whatever it might be, that that separates the, the great teams from the exceptional ones and the ones that really stand at the top of the, the podiums. And so, yeah, we have to put that effort in because, like I say, we're coming from four different teams. Ben and Mark have, have a good bit of experience curling together, of course, with Kevin and with both Kevins over the years. But um, for Brendan and myself joining those guys, and it takes some work. So we're we're excited. And we've got Coach uh, Coach Paul Webster with us as well. That's and right. He's, he's been a big part of helping us um, have lots of discussions and, and kind of get our, get our season going. And is that the secret sauce? I mean, when you look at the force of and the experience and all the Olympics that are on that team and everything else, and uh, is that the secret sauce, do you think? Or what is it that's going to make this team, you know, the world beater? I think so. We're excited that we're all we're all located in the same the same province. We can get together and, and, and practice as a team and and build build as a team. And that's something that really excites all of us. And I think when we were forming this team, um, was it was a big part of it knowing that we could get together we all we need to do is hit the highway and we can be together in a, in a few hours to uh to practice train as a team so that's another part of it colleen but um yeah there's there's excitement we know we have some ability but we're gonna have to um become a really strong team to to f reach our goals yeah. uh brett this is the start of a new olympic cycle um how do you guys approach that? Do you, do you look at this as a as a four year build? Um, Paul, I know, is very deliberate about planning. Um, how do you guys break this up? What 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 is this first year sort of goal? And then do you look at the four year cycle? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I mean, the big the big goal is always at the end of the four years. Um, mm. we're, we're trying. I guess our goal right now is to try to get all four of us. Um, throwing the rocks similarly so we can you know get some similar results and it's just going to make our shot making a little bit easier you know, focus on that communication and and the, the team building really like like we kind of said but um you know i'd be lying if 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 we're saying we're we're hoping we we don't win you know we're, we're not just trying to peak in four years we're, we're trying to win some some events along the way and see some success and um i'm sure we're gonna have lots of losses along the way too but that's okay it's just kind of learning from those and um yeah it's exciting i think um yeah we're we're, we're starting to kind of we're still at the bottom of the ladder and we're kind of starting to climb up now so it, it might take time to to get to where we want to go but we're uh we're trying to take all the steps that we need to nice i haven't asked colleen this and i want to ask you this i put this out to twitter last night and i was inundated with responses a draw to the button in an extra end 
to decide a single elimination game. Mm. Uh, Brett, we'll start with you. Do you love it or do you hate it? Uh, it's exciting. It, <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I always love when we when we have a draw to the button, whether it's to, to win a game. I'm, I'm all for it, you know, if, especially if, if we get our team involved. And um, I usually like our chances in that situation. So so I love it. Um, and it and it is exciting for it's exciting for the for TV when when you're watching. It's exciting for the fans in the rink. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure in this event uh, even before the extra end because you have to play a good game even just to get to that point. Single elimination. Yeah, it, it, it gets you, and it's the start of our season too. So there's uh, with our new lineups and everything, we're not quite well-oiled machines yet. So um, there's 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 challenges, but it's it's a exciting format, and it's nice as an athlete to be playing in something that's a little bit different because um, I think we can. It, it just creates a little excitement around the sport. And and it's in your hands too. Like you've got to judge it perfectly. That's one rock you don't want to misjudge. Except for, the, <laughs> except for the fact that we know by that point of the game, the pebble's been worn down. You know, I mean, Brett, you famously, how far did you tell Guju in St. John's? How much further was it? And thank God for that, or else you guys missed that shot at that point of the game. How, how much more did you say to throw it? Eight feet? I'll just ask, I'll ask Ben and Mark here. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it in. That's yeah. team building oh. right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, hey, we don't. I don't think anybody wants to run the nerves through that that shot again. But uh, yeah, like, it, like you say, it, it adds another dynamic at the end of the game. And I know we've had a bit of rain here, kind of in in, uh, in Fredericton, and the ice looks. It's it's tricky to pinpoint those draws right now. So. Um, yeah, but hey, everybody's playing on the same surface, and and it's just a it's just a challenge. I think the cool thing about this event is, first off, that draw to the button and the sudden death elimination or you're out. It creates a drama in September that's unusual. So people, the crowds here have been terrific. The patch has been awesome. And to create that buzz on curling at this time of the season is a tough thing to do. And I think the drama of the extra end, um, last night it was thrilling to watch that draw to the button. Uh, the crowd was into it. I think it's, I mean, I remember, I remember a Continental Cup where the game was decided on a draw to the button mm -hmm. that I had to throw. It was electric and it was Did a make team it? shot. Did you make it? Made it, believe it or not, made it. So I don't know, I think, I think it's creating a real buzz about curling in September when, and let's face it, Draw the buttons are meaning more and more. We saw that at the Olympics. Mm. Uh, the more times people are like, this is for the game. This is for a lot of money. This is to move on. I That's think, a good point. I think it's a good thing for the sport. That's a good point. It's not all the time. It's one event. You know? uh, Brett, last thoughts. Obviously, uh, we're excited. Colleen and I are excited. Um, you guys obviously got to be excited about this season and just being back out there. Last thoughts. Yeah, I think uh, every, yeah everybody's really pumped. It's great to get started, and I think, like Colleen said, it's it's awesome to start our year with such a great event. And this uh, yeah, this points bet event is it's just something different, something to get us excited, and we're enjoying it so far. And it's it's great to finally get to an event in Fredericton. You know, I'm from the East Coast, and yeah. Fredericton's been due to have an event for a few years now. So it's exciting to get here and to get to play um, in front of some some East Coast fans. And yeah, we've been really enjoying it. Uh Say hi to the boys, Brett. Good luck along the way. You're right. The Willie O'Ree. Hi. <laughs> this is the party. This is the party. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're in. You're I'm in. in. You're hi. In. The lighting. That's good for her. Do you like? This is live television, people. That's awesome. This is live. <laughs> hi, I Jen. I'm, I'm phone in and then I saw Colleen. I'm she jealous of all of you guys. It looks like you're having a great time. Brett, we'll let you go play your crib game with the guys. Say hi to all of them. Good luck along the way. We'll be talking throughout the season. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Jen. 
How are you? How's the ice? You, you just finished practice. How are you? It was, a, it was good. It was a little tricky tonight. It's been a little bit rainy here in the Maritimes. So it was a little frosty out there tonight. A little? <laughs> Talk about keeping up with the Jones here. 12 Scotties between. Look at, look at, we've even updated the, the Colleen and Jennifer Jones. You only have to change one name here. We could have a show. We're sisters yeah, in another life. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, yeah, you look, you look younger Emma, than, hold on. The goat that she's taking this new team and putting not on the back i know they're a good team but what you're doing awesome freaking awesome okay i'm gonna step away i'm stepping away she took the words out of my mouth i i was about to say you look younger than ever you seem more energized than ever what has this been like for you, Jim? It, it's honestly meant the world for me. I'm just loving the girls. They're so much fun to be around. They're just, they just want to work. They just want to curl. They, they want to work hard and be the best. And it rubs off. Like it's super energizing and exciting. And if I can have a little bit of impact, um, that makes me feel really good. So I'm just thrilled. And it's really a privilege to be a part of this team. You know, I love this and I've been meaning to call you. So my apologies, but we're talking now. But I've always admired how much you've wanted to give back to the game and, and give back to your daughters and to show your daughters what they can be, strong women in sports. And now you've got this young team. I get goosebumps thinking about how these stars aligned for you. Um, how did you, how did you and how are you approaching all of this in, in the advice you're giving but also knowing you want to win now, but also preparing them for a big career. And, and one more thing, how much of yourself do you see in them in the fire? I know you always have the fire, but in the beginning. Yeah, it's a lot of questions. Yes, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, honestly, like um, for me, yeah, I, I just love the sport of curling. Curling has given me more than I could have ever dreamed of. And I mean, I'm not doing this. Like, I think they're amazing, amazing, talented players. And the most important part is that we're we're one team. Like, we're all equal individuals on this team, and everybody has an equal say. And I just, I can't. They're the most selfless people I've ever been around. They just want what's best for the team in every aspect. And it's just, it's fun. Like, it's fun to watch them. And I see the fire. I see the determination. They remind me a lot of myself when I was their age, which was just yesterday. So it's easy to remember. Um, <laughs> But yeah, they're they're really they're so excited to play. They're so excited to to practice and to to listen and to try to try new things. So that's really to me that's what life is all about is try to about experimenting, pushing yourself and never being satisfied with where you're at, like trying to look and see if you can be better in all aspects of life. And so they remind me of that every day. So I'm getting just as much from this as they are and it's been it's been a ton of fun and I I hope um I hope that one day they'll look back and think it was just a, a tremendous experience. Um, you and I have had a lot of conversations over the last number of years. Um, I never doubt how excited you are going into a season. Where do you put that excitement level going into this season? I, I'm really excited and it's fun. Like, And they want to play so much, so we're playing a lot. And, and that's, I love to play a lot. So it's just, it was, it reminded me again of when we used to play all the time and and we've, we, this is our fourth event together already, and it's only mid-September, so it's, I'm really excited. I mean, obviously, I'm nearing the end of my career at some point here, so, you know, I never want to take any game or any event for granted, and um, so we're just trying to soak up the, soak up the moments, soak up the memories, and, yeah, hopefully create some wins along the way. Uh, a note about perspective. What, what type of perspective do you have at this point when you step out onto the ice, Jen? Yeah, I feel like I've always had really good perspective, and I think that's because of my parents and my mom. And, and Hi, just, Carol. Yeah, I'm sure she's watching. But, yeah, um, it's, we've always had really good perspective. I've never, ever taken anything for granted and just feel really humbled by everything that's – all the opportunities that we've ever gotten. So the perspective has always kind of been there. But I think as you become a mom and I have daughters, and I want to set a really good example for them and – and really try to be a role model as much as I possibly can for others that are striving for their dreams because I think life is all about dream chasing and trying to live life to the fullest. And if we can have any impact on even one individual, I think it makes it all worthwhile. I love what's happening at this event. Single elimination, a draw to the button to decide an extra end. Um, but I tweeted out last night, Jen, about a draw to the button and, and Fans resoundingly did not like it. 
I don't. I'm with the fans. <laughs> I'm a traditionalist. There's so many great things about our game. And to me, it's not a skilled based game and not based on one shot. And it should be based on the entire game and the entire team. And, and a draw the button is a, is a team shot, but I, I don't think a, the outcome of a game should come down to the draw the button. Oh, but Jen, this is just one event in September when, you know, you're trying to drum up interest, don't you think? Do you like that I jump in every now and then? And I get that. I get that. But it's just, I mean, this is kind of what we do, right? We're trying to get better. So, um, but here we are, we're playing in it. And we're just, again, grateful for the opportunity, grateful that that everybody's come on board to create this great event for us to be able to play on Arena Ice in front of these amazing fans in Fredericton. We're having just a blast and we're really feeling super happy to be here. So I guess if it means to draw the button, it means to draw the button. <laughs> and you'll be ready to throw it. Uh, yeah, who, who yeah do you absolutely. Have, who do you have tomorrow? We play Sturmay tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, another great young team, super talented team out of Alberta, came out of the U of A program. So I'm sure it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a battle for sure. You know, I always appreciate you coming on the show. I'll let you enjoy your night. It's wonderful yeah. to see you, Jen. So great to see you. Thanks for having yeah. me on. Awesome. I'll let I'll let the Jones oh, catch up there. I'm gonna give this back to Colleen live hey, TV. Is it true you're coming to Halifax and yes. Stu Sells? Oh my God! I feel like I'm a maritime. She's half maritime. I am. She I is. It. She's one of the Jones girls. What can I tell you? I'm I jealous that I'm not there with you love guys. Your mother. Um, okay, I'm back. Um, Colleen, just but to know, back to, because she's gone now, what she's doing with this team, their learning curve, you can see it yeah. just going like this so quickly. It's, uh, I love seeing it because she is just the goat for a reason and that she's this, this team, of course, you know, Mackenzie Zacharias, they were already at the Scotties. Carly Burgess has won more Canadian juniors than anybody else. It was a talented team, yeah. but they were still going to be to get where they're going with Jennifer kind of guiding them and giving them all the secrets to success. This is going to take them there faster than what they ever could have got. I, I think it's amazing. I love, I love it. Just, just a moment to um, compliment and admire both you and Jennifer about what you've given to the game, Colleen, uh, you and Jennifer over, over the years. And I know you'll deflect because I know you well enough, but, but you really have made such an impact on the game. And I think it's, it, you know, you being out there today, Jennifer being with this young team, yeah. to me, this is sort of gets at the heart and the spirit of the game of curling. And so to both of you, thank you. Um, and, and I think the fans just adore both of yeah. you and what you've done for the game. So just a note about that. You can, you can tell how much it energizes her as well. And I can remember when Jennifer came, and it's funny Jennifer saying she's a traditionalist because she is, of course. But she, like me, played in under every format, you know, open curling, three rock, four rock, five rock. Right. Now draw to the button magic. Now draw to the button to determine whether or not you move on into an Olympic playoffs. Right. These are all changes that curling's made. It's been a very, if you look at other sports, very um, groundbreaking in mm -hmm. not staying with tradition. And I think right. that sets it apart and what continues to drive a lot of interest in the game. I would uh, agree. But, but I remember Jennifer when she was a young and fresh to the Scotties and we were, it was like 2003 or, you know, back when we were on our run and she came and she said, I want to be where you're at. Like wow. she was, and not many people have come up to me and said that, like, what hmm. did it take? What did it, you know? And she was, well, she's always been a student of the game. Her curling IQ is off the charts and that's fundamental to be a champion. Right. Um, she's a great, champion and a great ambassador to the sport and to be doing what she's doing taking a young team is a risk for jennifer jones and it's paying off uh julie tells us it's getting emotional it wouldn't be that curling show uh without uh some emotion uh we're gonna bring in mike and joe i i'm i'm hoping that brad uh can join us at some point i might text him here to see if he's gonna join us yeah we're gonna bring in joe and mike wonderful nice. to see you guys but oh I, I want to miss triathlete. Yeah, you're running. Looking for, okay. Hang on, I'm not even muted. 
I'm not even ready to go, you guys. guys. The band is back together. Oh, that's okay. so good. I'm not happy right now. Why? Right. Curling show t-shirt, curling show mug. Did you pay for that? Did you go online and buy those? For this. I oh, okay. No. I, I, I'm, 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 my I, own fault. I'm an art my own fault. curler now. <laughs> this is what you get to do. Is it coffee? Is it wine? No. It could be anything. It could be anything. Listen, uh, this is a point of the show where I want to tell you two, uh, Colleen and I know this and everybody else watching, we're here every Thursday night for the entire season. What? What? Yeah. That is That's outstanding it. news. Hope you got a raise. It's our third season. We might even get more mugs. <laughs> right. There we go. We'll send you, you a go. mug, Mike. For sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But we are on this. We're committed. Um, All right. I but, like it. I mean, I'm going to the French Riviera in October for a couple of weeks. So maybe not that Thursday. Not that Thursday. Also, then. I'll, I'll co-host with you. Or Yeah, Joe and I will co-host with you. Colin. I love that. That's amazing okay. news, you guys. Congrats. I think that's fantastic for curling. I think what you guys are doing is amazing. Getting curlers to open up and check in. And I think the most exciting thing about watching curling is getting to know the athletes and see how they perform. So I think that that is phenomenal news. And I'm really happy to hear it. Congrats. Um, Joanne, I'm getting, do you think I'm getting a lot of shirts about not gonna catch the on. Sorry? Do you think my nickname of Team Flowman is going to catch on? Yeah, I was going to say, I think we should just start naming teams, like a name. Yeah, like, amen. The Destroyers. Or, you know, yes. like... <laughs> yeah. Yes. You, what did you come up with? Right? To that point, to that point, do you know how many tweets I get? And and I'll let everybody else come to their own conclusions. Why do, the, why do we name the team after the skip? There are a lot of people... Oh, well, please, Mike, we need to name the skip. <laughs> Please, Mike, we have to have that. Right? Have We're the okay. most important right, Mike? person on the team, right? No, okay. I love it, though. Like, <laughs> the destroy hammer the destroyers. Time. Like, who is it? I don't know, but that sounds crazy. <laughs> and, like, maybe there's a team that's not as intimidating. They're the Sequoias. Like, I, the Sequoias. Yeah. Bad idea, Devin. <laughs> we like the skips name. Mike, are you in the bar at home? You've got the 90. I, I am, actually. You, show us the 98 and, posters you put up there, though. Well, you people have seen them, I think. You 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 actually tweeted out some I've, stuff. I, so I've seen them, but look. I've got two or three there, yeah. The so. Nagano posters, the originals there. That's from a bygone era, people. That's back in the 90s when Colleen and I were... At Carrot we, we, we were big deals back then, yeah. Right. How, how are Colin, you? We're so happy to see you out there on the ice today, by the way. It wasn't that it was great. Amazing. It was really on good. The ice. Yeah. Yes. And sweeping was pretty darn good. Got to say. Oh, me? Yes. You guys, you. See, I can't hear a thing in here, guys. Yes, I'm your sweeping like, was amazing. See, right now, they're cleaning the floors here at the arena is what's happening. If I, if, if I was doing what you um, were doing, I'd have to be in a hot tub. How was my nice sweeping? Bath. Did you see my sweeping? Joanne, yeah. how was my sweeping? See, I have it on PVR. I'm having to learn how to be an armchair fan. I had to work today. You were busy and running, swimming. and I will say, though, Mike, because you are gonna, you might remember the 80s and Paul Galsall when, when they were just yeah. switching from corn brooms to push brooms. And Neil Houston and um, Glenn Jackson. Yep. Uh, they were in full plank sweeping with the. Now their hand position was low and their head was low. Were you born then, Mike? Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I actually, I actually curled with Paul Gausel, if you can imagine. You curled with Paul Gausel? <laughs> I did. I did. Get out! Did you yeah, order that's the pizza story. in the middle of the game and just eat all, it? Were you on that team then? <laughs> all I will say is that he didn't eat very much for the entire weekend. He was busy, you know. Anyway, that's another right. story for another oh. time. But. Hold on. I want to jump in. We're talking about <laughs> sweeping. Meanwhile, Joe's over here sipping whatever's in her mug, um, having, having, having her. and whatever is in Mike's mug. Um, having done these, these or this triathlon, Joe, tell us, because you, you've been crushing it. Oh, What's it? How do, how yeah, does I'm not sure if anyone's heard, but I did a few races this summer. I might have mentioned it like once or twice. Um, yeah, it's just different. Like endurance sport versus what you do in curling, they're not the same at all. Um, I completed a half Ironman. It took me almost five and a half oh, hours to do wow. it. Five and a half hours of exercise. Took a week off and then I was like, cool, I might do a couple of my like curling workouts. I My arms and my chest were sore for three days. I went to the stairs to do one of the workouts I used to do with like Rachel and Sarah. I even took it easy. 
and I still can't walk today. And I did that uh-huh. today. So just oh, wow. different sports, right? So curlers are the real deal. Um, so we're triathletes, obviously, uh, but it's <laughs> fun to try new things. And yeah, it was, it was definitely an experience. As you can all see, we're getting all caught up. We haven't talked to each other for a while. Let, let, let's get into this because I always appreciate the candor and honesty. We're going into a new Olympic cycle, and I've been thinking a lot about this, and I've been thinking about Canada's place in the curling world. Mike, I'll start with you because you never mince your words. <laughs> this is a big quadrennial for Canadian curling, as far as I'm concerned. We've fallen back big time. In fact, getting into the playoffs at an international event isn't a given anymore. What has to happen in this quadrennial, and what's at stake for Canadian curling? Well, I think I think that's a bigger that question is a bigger question than I can answer. What's at stake for Canadian curling? I think, I think, I think what curling fans need to understand is that it's not a given anymore that, that the team that represents Canada has an advantage because it's just not true. You know, you, there, there's, there's, I don't know, Joanne, you can talk to this, to this as well, but there's so many teams that you play at, at the international level that have been there so many times, you know, they literally will have a conversation with, with each other saying, okay, we'll see you next year at the world's. We don't have that. We don't have that luxury in Canada. So, so when we send teams to the World Championships, it's really difficult. Now, having said all that, teams like Brad Gushu and and uh, Carrie Anderson, who won the last three Scotties, and Rachel, and all these teams who have gone to multiple World Championships, still aren't having any more success than the teams that go from the other countries. So, you know, there's a lot of talk about. Well, Nicodine goes to the Worlds every year. Well, listen, Brad Gushu has been to five of the last six international competitions representing Canada. And, you know, look, just, you, know, you just have to look at the number of gold medals versus bronzes and silver. So the level of talent you cannot understate from the rest of the world. Hmm. So I think it's up to curling fans across the country to understand that winning Canada is so difficult. And the fact that they, the, the success at the World Championship shouldn't have a bearing on whether the team is deserving or good enough or whatever else it is, is the words you want to use. They're amazing teams. So we have got a, we've, got a, we've got a ton of great teams in the country, a lot of great new teams. We've already talked about that tonight with, with, on both the men's and the women's side. And they all have fantastic opportunities to represent our country internationally and you know, we as curling fans, I, I'll wear my curling fan hat now. We do nothing but cheer for them and hope they have success. Right. Me as the broadcaster, I know that they are in tough. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. athletes know they're in tough. You know, it's just going to be, it's just, it's just a tough thing to, to, to win at the world level now. Joe? I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think we need to look at our timing in Canada with mm. when we choose our representatives because you go to the Briar, you go to the Scotties and it's a whirlwind to then go to the world championship. And it's so hard to win a Scotties or to win a Briar. Mm. I think that it's something that's extremely flawed in how we're choosing our reps. So yeah, Nicodine knows he's going to worlds, but their Swedish championship is months before worlds. They're eating popcorn and drinking water. <laughs> and watching Canadians just slug it out. Right. So I know that it's not an easy thing to change timing like that. I, there's a reason why it's probably set up like that. But I think that because what Mike's saying, the world is so good now that if we need to start doing everything we can to give the Canadian hmm. reps the best chance possible to go there and perform. That's interesting because we've been so fixated on the timing of the Olympic trials. I haven't heard that before, Joe. But oh, I have- no, really. Sorry, I won't. I won't even start. But well, well no, we really have time to celebrate. No, winning. Like, you're, you're, uh, I mean, we won. We won the Scotties in 2017. Dream come true. Like I can officially retire, and like I'll be happy mm. if I never play another curling game. And like three days later, you're like, oh my god, we got to leave in ten days for Beijing, right? Wow. And that's that's crazy because then you go and have whatever experience you have, and you almost don't even get to savor that big Scotties win, and especially if you don't have the results that you want. Mm. So that's, it's really fast. I remember after winning the first Scottish, I said, if I never win another curling game again, I will die happy. And then we went and blew it at the worlds. And I'm like, going, okay, change my mind, change my mind. <laughs> I take that back. I want to win a worlds. Um, but I think the pressure of winning a Scotties and a Briar is so intense 
and the joy is so big. For us, it was hard to do the turnaround in a very quick time when you're yeah, and what's waiting get... what's waiting for you on the other end is like you don't have any free spaces on the bingo card anymore at worlds uh, you guys would know better than me and i i was trying to do the math in my head as as you were talking but when we look at these international teams i know they're traveling and they're doing the slams and they're coming over here a lot but i'm looking at the schedule of of these teams here in canada and it's like travel and peak and peak and peak and peak like by the time you get to March and April, that mm. fatigue is real, isn't it? We Joe? always planned our season so that it wasn't, because we knew once you win a Scotties and you're going back the next year and same for, you know, the Briar now. So we weren't committed to all of the events. We played right. in the events we needed to play in, more like a Krista McCarvel um, training schedule. More isn't necessarily better, mm. and it's taking your moments and making sure you're fresh at the end of the season for the World Championships, I think, is a really important thing to do, pacing yourself. But so you're, you're driven by sponsors to play in a lot of events. You need to keep collecting points in order to stay in the slams. Well, so that's, the big, that's the big factor, isn't it? So the part of, part of it is systematic where... You know that wild card spot is is pretty coveted. You know if you can know if you know you're going to finish in the top one or two in the in the CTRS. In order to do that, you have to play a lot. There's no you can't not skip events, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you if you want to make sure you're into the Briar or the Scotties one way or the other, you want to get to the top of the CTRS list, which requires to playing playing quite a number of events. So right. it's a systematic change as opposed to just kind of uh, let's just move the Scotties to December. That's not the easy solution. It's 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 a it's a much longer conversation. Mm. Um, so I, th I think there's there's merit to naming any team that represents the country a little bit sooner. I think you know the it just there was so much success when the the world field was not very deep. Right now now every team is good. <laughs> so right. right so you you can't just go in there exhausted after just peaking a few couple of weeks earlier and expect to come up with that same type of performance mm -hmm. two weeks after the fact that's and even even the olympic trials three three you know two months after the fact is right. difficult enough so so yeah so? It's, it's a big conversation well one thing i did want to say that i think is awesome as we've talked about with this event the single knockout mm. 16 teams crazy intensity that looks a lot like a world championship now if you don't get that by right it's, mm -hmm. it's playoffs baby right so that's, you know, you make it into playoffs at the Worlds and there's six teams there and that sudden death aspect, I think that that's something great that all these teams are going to have more of that experience as well. To that point, we saw a Canadian team miss a playoff spot at the Olympics because of draws to the button. Are teams looking at that a different way going into this season and this quadrennial? I don't think the teams were ignoring the fact. I don't think that's that was the case. I, I just think that it didn't happen. I mean, I don't. I don't. I, I. I think all the teams that compete at the top level understand the importance of the draw of the button. You know, it's it's determines the hammer. You know, and all the slams for the last number of years show you can winning winning the draw of the button sometimes is worth as much as a win, which right. exactly what happened at the Olympics. So it's not news to anyone at the World Championships. It's news to the fans. Uh, it's not going away. <laughs> exactly what you're talking about earlier, Colleen. The excitement around a draw the button. Now it's before the game, but the players understand the importance of that draw the button. They they get it. There's no. I don't think there's any way to to describe it. They they the players understand the importance of it. I just think that you know having having a couple of events. I wouldn't want every event to have a draw the button to win, but I th I think it's coming. I hate to say it, but I think it's coming to the World Championships and to the Olympics. And I think so too. Because because, because excitement is what the WC and television is. and television, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Well, also no tick coming to the World Champions, all the worlds this year. Right. So what? How quickly does Canadian curling Joanne have to pivot to the change in the no tick rule at all of their championships? Yeah, I think anything that's happening at worlds, you have to do at your national championship. So getting rid of that page playoff, if we're not doing it at Worlds, why are we doing it at our nationals? 
Um, I think that curling is obviously evolving. There's lots of talk about time clocks and how to make the game faster, more exciting for fans. And um, we need to try to keep up in Canada. Uh, why don't we talk about some overarching themes going into this season? <laughs> Mike, what are you going to be paying attention to? There are so many changes. I don't want to <laughs> steer you into an answer. No. But what are you looking forward to in, in sort of the reset year, right? The first the first year is always about the new team and their dynamic. And and you heard Brett Gallant talk about how much they've spent to time how much time they spent together just to get to know each other mm. nothing to do with shot making so i think that that's a huge uh underappreciated uh by some teams underappreciated uh strength of, of many teams is that their, their their team dynamic is so strong so um i think people understand that uh, the teams understand that and I, I you know hate to say it but that but i like getting to like january saying okay well that team's not working out that one's not going to work out and mm. where are they going to end up and and to me and not to jump too far ahead but brad jacobs is the wild card on the men's side because brad brad's like mark kennedy was four years ago mark took time off so when brad comes back who's getting displaced so I, I'm excited for many reasons and, and uh, to see the success and to see some teams aren't going to be uh, maybe as successful as they'd like to be. But you know, dynamic is everything. Mm, that's a pretty me. strong team waiting in the weeds. Brad Jacobs, whatever. He Regardless is. of who he plays with. I think I think we're a strong mixed foursome waiting in the weeds. It's I like this capture guy. We should I know, I know, Let's I do know. it. Let's uh, chartreuse on the line, Colleen. Joe, real quick, we're going to get you the last word. Brad Gushu is is waiting in the wings for us. He's he gets us. the last word. He gets, he the, gets last, the last, last word. But, Joe, <laughs> some quick thoughts going into this season. Yeah, I'm going to keep it tight here because we kind of, we got to make time for Brad. Um, <laughs> I'm curious to see, like, this is an easy year to sweep everything under the rug, right? It's the honeymoon phase. Mm. We're saying, oh, you don't want to peak in that first year of the quad. So ooh, it doesn't really matter how well you do. I'm curious to see what teams seem to go there to open up, to get to know each other, to be vulnerable and not sweep everything under the rug. I think the teams that are able to find that dynamic that Mike was talking about over here, um, those are going to be the teams that we see succeed and excel. And it's tough to have gas sometimes in the first year of a quad after everything everyone mm. went through, but finding a way to get excited and, and rejuvenated and, and to see who brings it to the table and all that energy, it's going to be really fun to watch. <laughs> Awesome. Will, will you guys uh, will you guys join us most Thursdays? Most Thursdays. Most Thursdays. Well, oh, look, no commitment. No Listen, commitment. this is past my bedtime, though. I gotta, I'm not going to lie. This is like... It's like no, we're going to do earlier. Time. We had to wait for okay, Brad Gushu to win his right. game, and then we came on the <laughs> okay, air. Okay, fair enough. We'll leave it up to Brad just when we get on the air. I like that. That's great. Awesome to see you, too. Guys, Thanks, cheers. Guys. Great to see, see you as well. Hard. Awesome. Keep running, uh, swimming, and cycling, Joanne. By the I way, I know. No kidding. Let's oh, bring him. Yeah. Let's bring in Brad right now. It's late on the East Coast. Brad, wonderful to see you. Um, hey guys. First event of the year, back under the bright lights. I know how much you love playing the big events in front of a television camera. How are you feeling? And what did you think with the new team? And what was that like, Brad? Yeah, it, it was exciting to get back out there and, and to get on arena ice in front of a great crowd and. And to get out there with the first game with EJ, it was fun. Uh, we're still trying to find our sea legs. You know, we talked to, to Team Epping before we went out, and they're playing their fifth event, and here we are playing our first game. So uh, it's going to take a little bit for us to, you know, to get our kind of mojo going. But, you know, I like, like how things went today. We had a lot of fun out there. You, I, I'm going to jump in, call, sorry. But, Brad, you have, um, I, I think, as I understand it, started your season a little later not not been too quick to get on the ice and it seems like that has worked for you is that the blueprint again for this year where you talk about other teams playing five events this is your first late september yeah the the season has gotten longer and longer over the last few years and in particularly for us in the last couple of years we played a lot and I think uh, there's part of us that want to make sure we, we still recover really from the last two years. You know, the summer goes by really fast and, and we tried to extend it as much as possible. And we probably wouldn't have played until the first Grand Slam had this event not come about. So, uh, you know, we're, we're looking longer term and, and making sure that, you know, we're ready in, in March and in April and when the big events are, you know, the real big events are, are, uh, are played and also four years time. 
you know, we don't want to wear ourselves out and, and uh, we're not spring chickens either. So, <laughs> you know, playing five events at this point in the year, I, I don't know if I could even physically do that. So it's, uh, it's something we've, we've accounted for and, and we plan for. EJ squeezing in there. How did that fit for you today? Yeah, I love playing with EJ. I've had the opportunity to play with him at the Everest here in Fredericton about four or five years ago. And we played in the Skins game as well. And I enjoy both of those uh, experiences. And, and obviously, EJ's been one of the best seconds in the game. So he slid into this team pretty easily. There's some adjustments. We spent a few days last week in Toronto um, working on some technical adjustments to try and get him thrown a little closer to us. So that's going to take some time for everybody to get accustomed to. But uh, he's su such a good player and such a talent that, uh, yeah. yeah, Ryan Harnan, there you go. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. We're, we're enjoying it. Brad, the relationship that you and Brett had developed over the years was uh, was a, a tight one. There was a lot of trust there. We were talking to Brett earlier about your throw to win the Briar in St. John's when he gave you that valuable information about how much further you had to throw the rock. Is EJ going to play that role or or who takes on that role, that information sharing role? Because that was a big part of your success. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think Jeff played a big part in that over the last number of years. But that's not something I necessarily want us to assign to one person. I think we all want to be part of it. And I think over the, the course of this year, I think that one person might kind of evolve uh, into that person. Uh, you know, I, I think jo uh, Joanne talked about vulnerability and, and you have to have someone that's willing to be wrong. And, and in that moment, you know, when Brett said, you know, six feet heavier, he, if, if he's wrong in that moment, you know, the blame comes on him and, and you got to be comfortable and confident that your team teammates are going to support you no matter what happens. And I think we had built that, that kind of vulnerability within our team where, you know, if Brett was wrong there, we would have said, you know, I'd, I'd rather you give me that information than keep quiet and, and, you know, not let the person know that it could potentially be heavier. So that's something that comes with playing together for a long time and, and being willing to, to make those mistakes. And I think that's uh, what all of these new teams are going to have to do over the next few years. And certainly our team, even, even though we only have one person coming in, you know, we have to have those conversations. Brad, you're the goat in men's curling. We had Jennifer, the goat of women's curling on or a little earlier. Is it a little hard not to be sort of looking over your shoulder at everybody chasing what you've got right now and who scares <laughs> you? Who scares, you? Uh, who, who scares us? Uh, you know, uh, everybody, to be honest. I, <laughs> I've played long enough where I know anybody can, anybody can beat us. But obviously, you know, Brendan's put together a very good team this year. And, and I like what Matt Dunstone did with his team as well. Um, you know, Kevin Cooey, I think that that team for him is, is going to really benefit him and, and allow him to, to play the way Kevin's capable of playing. So I pretty well listed, uh, you know, the top four teams and, and you go beyond that. I, I like what Reed did as well. There's not many teams that I don't think uh, made good moves. Um, there's there's some solid teams and and it really comes down to that that awkward kind of personality part, like how. How is everybody going to open up and, right. and be comfortable in that environment? And you never know um, until you get into it because I've, we've seen teams in the past that had four incredible talents and they just didn't work together. So, mm. you know, this fall is going to tell a good story and, and this full year is going to tell a good story, but there's some good teams on paper. I wonder how you approach this, Brad, because in the past, when you were the best in Canada, it meant you were going to an international event and you were going to win a medal. That's not the case anymore. So it's one thing to be the best in Canada, but how mentally do you prepare yourself to know that being the best in Canada, you even have to raise your level that much more now when you go to the international scene, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't, I don't know, but do you approach it a different way from years gone by? Um, I would say no. I, I, okay. I think what, what we're probably a little bit, um, we have some issues here in Canada is, is we get really up for the Scotties and the Briar. And, and, and there's still that level of a letdown when you go to a world championship, because the competition is so tough at the Scotties and the Briar. So deep is what I should say deep, because obviously you got Nicholas and, and you got Bruce and even uh, Schwaller this year 
has improved dramatically. You know, those teams can compete with the top teams in the world and the top teams in Canada, no doubt. I think, but when you play the Briar, there's just so much depth uh, mm. that when you get through it, you're kind of like, oh, that's awesome. I'm so excited. And then you get to the Worlds. And I, I don't know if I want to say a letdown. That's probably not the best description of it. But I think mm. we let our guard down a little bit as Canadians. And, and we got to find a way to be able to peak back up. And I think timing plays a part of that too, where, you know, you win the Briar and two and a half weeks later, you got to get back up on that peak, which is very right. difficult to do. So I know there's some discussions about how we, adjust the timing here in Canada to allow our athletes to celebrate our wins, but then have enough time to ramp it back up to get to the world championships. And I think if we can do that, I think you're going to see some more success, uh, but we're still playing some really, really tough teams and it is tougher than it was say 16 years ago when we went to the Olympics. Right. Right. Um, what's, what's keeping you going, Brad? You've, you've, you've won everything. You've done everything. What, is motivating Brad Gushu at this point? Um, you know, I, I, I just love to play. I, I think it's the biggest thing for me. Uh, you know, when, when I still enjoy going out to the curling club by myself and throwing my practice rocks, I'm still going to play. When that stuff becomes more of a chore and more of work, hmm. then I'm probably going to pack it in. Um, you know, the traveling part for me over the last number of years is always, it's always a challenge. And and now since the pandemic with the flight issues and airports and all that stuff, it's become worse. But I still love to play. I love to compete and I love to practice. And once that starts to go away, then I know it's going to be time for me to hang it up. And um, I would miss at this point in my life uh, with how I feel. I'd miss that opportunity when I go down and practice for an hour or two uh, by myself alone in the club. That's kind of my happy time. And, and uh, yeah, I'd miss that at this point. You, you never know in, in two, three years or seven or eight years, that might go away. And that's when I'll, uh, when I'll hang them up. You're, 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 you're not throwing a hundred rocks these days. Oh my God. No, no. I, I, I might get that in two or three practices, but yeah, I, I think I've gotten smarter uh, about how I practice and I practice with a whole lot more intensity and focus mm. than I used to. And, um, and that's due to the fact that I just can't throw the way I used to with some of the some of the issues that I've had physically over the last number of years. How, how's the hip? How, how are you feeling? Uh, it feels great right now. I, I worked really hard at strengthening it this summer and uh, it feels really, really good. Knock on wood. Uh, we're one game into the season of uh, probably <laughs> 80 or 90 games, but at this point yeah, I'm excited about how it feels. Um, it's just a matter now. Can I, can I maintain this until really May, I guess, when the, when the season's going to finish? Yeah, of course you can maintain it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to work, I'm going to work my butt off to, to do it. And I have this summer and, you know, I'm, I'm going to change the, the approach throughout the season as well, where, you know, I, I didn't work out that much during the season. I like to keep my legs fresh, but I think I gotta, I gotta make sure I keep this strength here. So it's yeah. going to change my practice schedule, change my training schedule to see if I can keep this under control. Well, I know a good gym owner in St. John's. I can hook you up with him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mark, right? He's, he's <laughs> yeah. Mark and Brad. Here you coming to Dartmouth too. Yes. Yeah, we're awesome. excited about that. Orange, the Orange Theory. Yeah, it's, uh, we're looking at, it's going to be later this fall, I think, hopefully, if everything goes well. But with all the delays and issues with the pandemic, um, I, I don't want to put a date out there right now. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Brad, real quickly, how's the family? Um, everybody's good? Everybody's good, yeah. my uh, have my daughters down. Uh, we got the ice in one day before we, uh, on Tuesday before we flew up here. So I took them down and threw some rocks with them. And uh, yeah, they're good. My mom and dad are good. My wife's good. Everybody's healthy, which is the main thing. Everybody's somewhat excited about curling season. Um, you know, they're excited to watch us, but obviously they're, uh, they miss me when I'm gone. So it's uh, it's kind of a, positive and a negative but i think they enjoy watching me on tv more than having me home right i'm sure you know, they do yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so nice of you to be with us who do you Thank who you. do you have tomorrow uh we play epping tomorrow i don't know if you guys watch that game tonight yeah. but i uh, i watched a lot of it actually um and man oh man it seemed like both teams were just playing on the edge with a ton of rocks in play and yeah you know, one shot could have change that game quite dramatically so uh tomorrow hopefully we can play it a little bit more basic because i don't want to get into that stuff yet because uh we're not ready <laughs> but uh 
game we'll see. two. It should be. Should game be two, man. You're, you're, you're telling me Brad Guju wants to get, you know, like a one or two point lead early and blank a few ends and control the scoreboard. You're telling me you don't want to do that tomorrow? Uh, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I want to do. Exactly. exactly. Which is kind of like what I want to do in every game. I might have watched that play yeah, out. That, that's the thing about his career that we kind of, we, we've figured out the blueprint sometimes too. Yeah. But sometimes there's some surprises in there too. Because yeah. you can make anything. So, yeah. so nice to have you with us. Oh, I want to ask you real quick, because you're, because you're such a student of the game, uh, single elimination, a lot of pressure, a draw to the button in an extra end. Are we going to see this sooner than later? Um, I, I hope not. I think for this type of event, I think it's, I think it's fun. I think it's exciting. And, and this is why this event was put into place is something different. I think when we start talking about Canadian and world championships, I don't think that's the direction we should go. Um, but certainly for something like this, I think it's fun. Uh, it's definitely going to be exciting. Uh, I think it already happened once. Uh, this mm -hmm. week, so, uh, and it's probably going to happen a couple more times before the week is done. So I'm, I'm excited about it. I think it'd be fun. Hopefully it's the other teams having to do it and not us. And we have a, a two point lead at the end, but if it, if it happens, we're, uh, we're pretty good at drawing the button. It's hard to believe we're in it, but the curling season is here and we're getting ready for it, Brad. And it's always good to talk to you. Yes. And, and it's, uh, it's good to see you guys back doing this show. So, uh, congratulations on it. And look forward to chatting with you, uh, a few times throughout the season. Appreciate it, Brad. Really. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Good luck tomorrow. tomorrow. Thanks. Wild well, call so much for a half hour show. I know. But you know what? I'm really excited because no one's here anymore and now I can hear you. <laughs> so we've, been, we, we've been getting exponentially better throughout. Cleaning the floor. What, uh, oh, what, what, I, what are you throat excited throat. about? We're get, oh, the music is coming in. We have music this year. We've made upgrades. We got a wrap. What are you excited about this year, Call? Oh, so much. I'm excited about mixed doubles and the new format that's coming in with a series. And we'll be talking about that next week. Uh, I'm excited to see how all the new teams perform. I've loved the early going on. It's, is this like at the Grammys that I got to wrap up the acceptance? Yeah, this is a I, I told so before you came on when Colleen, when she's talking, Play the music. Right. And actually, the guys who are trying to lock the building just did this to me. So they're going to lock me in. Now, I, they're going to turn out the lights. We know that happened before. They We're just going to have a dance party the whole season. Let's do it. Nice to see you. So, nice. Cole, we're back together, curling fans. Wonderful to see you all. Thank you yeah. to the curlers, always showing up. Yeah. And thanks, producer Soph. Love the music. Every Thursday night. Every Thursday night. Buckle up. News flash, buckling up. Okay. That's a wrap. See ya. Mitch is always right. That's me.